Hi guys, Hatlo from Cape Town. Welcome to another video. My day in gym hell. Now have you ever experienced a day in the gym so bad and so soul crushing that you feel I have to change gyms? Well, I hope not, but this is my story from two days ago. My day of hell in gym. I hope it's the last one. But now guys, remember, I'm, I'm 59 and I'm seriously pushing the limits. These kind of things is probably going to happen. Anyway, let me tell you the story. So two days ago, heading to the gym and as usual, I was amped for good workouts that I was doing back and tries. Now, when I was doing my first set, I realized everything is not lacquer. Now, okay, lacquer is an Afrikaans word we use for a lot of things, but in this context, it means I could feel there was something off. I had lots of power. I had no energy and zero stamina. I basically struggled my ass off to get through every rep in that set. And that was my first set. And after each set that I did, I had to wait significant periods of time just to be able to do the next set. And now remember guys, I'm doing supersetting. My whole routine is supersetting, so I'm used to punch it in the gym. Now I pushed myself through every one of these sets that I had to do with a focused and determined mindset. Now guys, such a mindset is awesome. It means no matter what, nothing stands in your way of getting done what needs to be getting done. The only time I will not train is when I have an official doctor six certificate that puts me off from gym. Otherwise, my ass is in that gym and I do what I need to do. No matter the pain, no matter the headache, no matter the lack of energy, there is just no excuses. But the bad side of this mindset is that I don't listen well enough to what my body tells me. And it was screaming at me with every set that I did. But alas, I finished my training. I actually still wanted to do three sets of incline bench press after my training because I'm working a bit on my upper pecs, but I just did not have the stamina or energy. I even skipped my stretching session, which I never do. So I headed straight to the locker rooms. And I remember guys, this is Monday. So Mondays, this gym is packed and it's late afternoon. So I took my shirt off, get my shoes off, just in my training pants and off to the sauna I go. Well, and I could just manage about five minutes in the sauna because I just felt there's something way off. So I get out of the sauna and after the sauna, I do my cold showers, close the shower door, get my pants out, throw it over the shower wall and put the cold shower on. One minute later, I'm down on my knees in that shower, feeling severe nauseated, pressure on my chest and my head buzzing like crazy. And I could feel it's getting quickly worse. Now I knew I had to make some quick choices here. I know something's gonna happen. So I got out of the shower and I immediately realized there's no way that I can put my pants back on. I'm not gonna manage it. So I just grabbed my towel and tried to put it on as tight as I can around my middle just to have something on. Because the last thing I wanna do is hit the ground between all these people in the locker room and lying there in all my glory. Now next to the shower is a chair. So I tried and go and sit down on the chair. But the moment that I sit on the chair, I realized it's sick seconds before you're gonna eat the ground dude so i slipped out of the chair sitting next to the shower there on the ground just holding my head and that is where the dung eats the fan the next thing i know i wake up sometime later but it was kind of nice it's like from a deep relaxing sleep you waking up and i realized there's this guy squatting behind me holding me up in the seated position i looked over to the guy and i'm telling you he had the kindest face and calmest voice and he asked me are you okay i can't recall exactly how he looked but i know that he instilled such a calmness in me with his sincere caring attitude i asked him how long was i out dude and he told me well not too long <laughs> and then i was gone again <laughs> So the second time that I woke up, you were still sitting behind me, holding me in a seated position. But now there's a lot of guys standing in front of me. Now guys, this is not my scene and definitely not my proudest moment. Remember, I only had a towel on. But this time I just registered what was going on around me and I was gone again, third time. But apparently they then struggled to actually get me to wake up again. They dragged me into a cold shower to try and revive me. Now, after a while, I, I came by, I don't know exactly how long it was, probably a, a couple of minutes. And the moment I came by, I wasn't fully registered what was exactly going on around me because I was still completely hazy. But I start realizing I'm sitting in a cold shower that's at full blast with the same kind-hearted guy squatting behind me, holding me up in an upright position to prevent the water from choking me. Now, honestly, guys, 
That was kind of a deep moment for me. Still feeling hazy, that moment felt to me like an angel was holding me. The kindness and the calmness that this guy brought to me, that was holding me, that was God sent. Now slowly I floated more into reality and by then the whole darn locker room was standing in front of me. Plus management. The one guy offered me his bottle of electrolytes, thanks dude. And then the guy holding me asked me, buddy are you strong enough to sit on your own? So I told him yes thanks man and he got up and he was gone. And I sat there in the shower for another five minutes because I was really weak. And eventually I got up, uh, grabbed my pants, put on my pants, walk over to the locker, get my stuff, get dressed and get off to the car. And when I get to my car, my car keys was gone. That I still don't understand because my car keys was in my bag, locked in my locker. So how the hell they could be gone? That's an open question. But anyway, I search, I search, I search. Eventually I found them at the reception where another good Samaritan has handed in my car keys. So I got my car keys, get back to my car, get in my car, which was a stupid decision because it's dangerous. I really was not with it. But anyway, I drove home and I got home safely. Thank you, God. Now, the moment that I got home, lying on bed, took my blood pressure and it was 99 over 50, which is crazy low so i could just imagine how low it was in the gym when i passed out today my neck is still sore and the side of my head where i hit the ground but otherwise i'm good i took one day off from the gym to recover today i'm hitting the gym again all right with a lowered head <laughs> so what went wrong well good news due to my approach to raise the bar with my fitness and body i'm fitter than ever and I lost nearly 10% in body weight with unwanted body fat in the last 45 days. My diet has been extremely healthy with just fresh foods, no processed stuff, a lot of veggies and salads and zero alcohol. And this had the effect that my current blood pressure medication was overdoing its job and my blood pressure just felt too low, dangerously low. So the good news is my body's functioning healthier and I can drop some of my blood pressure medication. Now some of you guys know that I need to keep my blood pressure very low because uh, since the age of 40, that's about 20 years ago, I have some kidney issues and my kidneys function only about 50%, which just means is I'm walking a thin line with my health and I need to be very well educated to know what I'm doing. Now guys, for me, everything that happens in life, especially when you go through this kind of stuff and tribulations and serious experiences, that is teachable moments in life. And we need to look at it to find the lesson. Now what did I learn from this? Number one, be very in touch with your older body and health. Don't take your health for granted, especially if you get older and push the limits with a fit lifestyle. Number two, a fit body makes you less dependent on prescription medicine. Now, what can be better than that? Number three, be focused because that focus can really get you somewhere, but not that focused that you do not listen when your body talks loudly to you. Number four, guardian angels are out there, guys. And I just say thank you, Jesus, for sending that kind, calm guy that cared for me in my moment of weakness. Now that guy was sitting with me in an ice cold shower, holding me upright, protecting me. Who the hell would have done that? This truly warms my heart. Now the question is, will I go back to the same gym? Yes, I will. I might look like this invincible, strong alpha. My son says I'm a beta, not alpha, because I think he's trying to be the alpha. But the truth is, guys, we are much more fragile than we think. And we need human kindness to help us through these rough patches. Gold works in wondrous ways. My image might be slightly tainted at the gym. Uh, I'll agree to that. But nothing I can't handle. And in fact, it's not about the fact that we fall in life. It's about how we get up after we fell. And that is what defines us. So guys, if you're brave enough to share us your day from hell in gym, please leave us a comment in the video section. And of course, if any of you want to sign up to my older body coaching system, it's the advanced system too. It's for novice older guys. It's designed for your body, your age, your goals, and extremely comprehensive. That is a system I'm following myself. I'll put the link for you up on the screen. Just click there or look at the video description box and we can get the ball rolling for you. Now guys, go train hard, but train wise. God bless you all. Gertloff and Cape Town signing off. Cheers.